It's too bright. Oh, look. Verb, 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 verb. Adaptive lighting, just as seen in Skyrim. Oh, it's him. It's that legendary figure. All the presents are wrapped. Those are the ones from me to people. Hopefully no um, mischievous creatures come and nick them and then I have to wander around the whole highland to recover them. Which is the storyline thingy thing of Dragon Dreams Christmas Nightmare, a game that I released at the start of December. Go and play it if you haven't, it's free to download. You can find the video on this very channel and stuff. <laughs> anyway, number 23. I'm sorry, I'm just still so proud of it. Ugh. And who wouldn't want to play a game where you play as Drakaya? The coolest dragon in existence. Santa's loading his sleigh. Why? Day early. Does it take you that long? <sighs> well, that's just an elf, that is. Is it? No, it isn't. It might be. Yeah, it is. Elfington Brown, because it's chocolate. Boop, boop, boop. Oh. It's the gremlin again. Uh, what has happened to half of these chocolates? All of the, almost all of the chocolates in this have been like weirdly deformed. Weren't they better last year? Couldn't you like make out what they were? Wow. I know that weird moustached gremlin thing was always weird. Didn't I eventually figure out what it was though last year? Like near the end of the month? I don't know. Anyway, we've got another column. And there's only one left. Oh! <laughs> it's not fair. You've been waiting all year for advent calendars, haven't you? Now it's almost gone again. Look at the colours. Quite nice, that is. Who are you calling her? Oh, it goes all mouldy. It does mouldy whoops. I don't know what's going on there, it's all weird and warpy. Bang bang ba ba bum ba da ba dum bum Next. What treats do we have in store today? Click on tap to see who is hiding behind today's bauble. Where's 23? Next. Ah, there. It's Dennis Unleashed! Dennis Unleashed? Oh no, isn't that Dennis the Menace again? From. Get in the festive spirit with Dennis Unleashed. From Come back tomorrow and find out what other treats CBBC have in store. From Paul the Potato, that early one, yeah. He's even got his dog. What was it called? Nasher or something. Today's. What is this? Oh no. Hilarious jokes from Nasher's Fleas. Check out this awesome compilation of. It's just a video again. Shall we watch it and. yeah. Let's do it. Hopefully, I don't get illegaled. Oh. Shut up! Why was the teacher cross-eyed? I don't know. Why was the teacher cross-eyed? Because she couldn't control her pupils. <laughs> Whatever. What do you call a bear with no teeth? I don't know. What do you call a bear with no teeth? A gummy bear. Oh. What's the difference between roast beef and pea soup? Mm, I don't know. What is the difference between roast beef and pea soup? Nothing. You can roast beef. What? What do you call a cow in a band? I don't know. You can roast peas, can't you? Whatever. What do you call a cow in a band? A musician! <laughs> what do you call a dog falling from a great height? I don't know. What do you call a dog falling from a great height? An idiot. A chihuahua! No. 
because he's falling. Oh. Why did the pie go to the dentist? Because it was I eaten. Why did the pie go to the dentist? Because it was stuck in some teeth. He needed a filling. Ah. <sighs> do you know where hamsters go on holiday? Death. Ooh, no. Where do hamsters go on holiday? Devon. Hamsterdam. <laughs> oh. How do you make a band stand? I don't know. How do you make a band stand? Uh. Get rid of the floor. Take away their chairs. <laughs> what? No, that'll just make them fall over, you idiot. What is a sausage's favourite kind of music? I don't know. What is a sausage's favourite kind of music? Bangers and mash. Rock and sausage roll. Ooh. Oh. What's invisible and smells of carrots? Ass. I don't know. What is invisible and smells of carrots? An invisible farm. Rabbit guts. Wait, what? Rabbit's guts. Why should you never fight a joke? I don't know. Why should you never fight a joke? Because they always have a punchline! Yeah. My dog... I've had enough of this, I'm sorry. And look how long it is. That's too many jokes. And they're just not funny enough. I mean, I guess at least they're better than some jokes. Like, what's a duck's favourite thing to watch on TV? Documentaries. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if that was in here, if it was about ducks. And... Why did the skeleton not go to the dance? Because he didn't have a body. I mean, he had no body to go with. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <sighs> what are we going to do instead, then? Is there something else we can do, actually? Oh, what the hell? Look at all the comments. Oh, fleas, I have got one now. What do fleas say at a cafe? Fleas, may I have a head of lettuce? What? A head of lettuce. Get it? <laughs> fleas? Head? No. What? Oh, wait, because fleas can be on the head. Gummy near. Ha ha ha. I agree with puppy rules. It is probably quite hard to come up with new jokes, so I appreciate the video. What? Wait, are they in reverse order? Old jokes. I agree with Cloud Topaz Pony. No offense, but my granddad can tell better jokes. No offense, but none of the but none were amazing or new. Sorry, everyone's very nice. No offense. I liked the first one best. Why was the teacher cross-eyed? Because she couldn't control her pupils. Just saying though, none of them were amazing. Then why are you laughing so much? So funny. Lol, so funny. Funny! <laughs> no. Lol, diamond. What? Hilarious. Lol, so funny. So funny. I really liked the jokes. Dogs and fox. What? My favourite joke was, Q, why should you never fight a joke? A, because it always has a punchline. First comment, pony. Uh, except, oh god, it's as bad as YouTube. It's not first comment at all. Joke. First one. Okay, Unicorn got it right, at least. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. Bunch of idiot. Can you crack this Christmas quiz? Let's do that instead, shall we? I know I was supposed to be saving these for next year, but whatever. We'll find plenty of stuff. Not every festive tradition takes place in the last weeks of December. The run-up to 25th December can include a manner of preparations for anyone celebrating Christmas. What's more... There are traditions linked to the Yuletide celebrations which take place as early as November. How many of these do you know? Test yourself with our quiz. Ah, okay. The Pre-Christmas Traditions Quiz. How much do you know about Stir Up Sunday and Advent? Stir Up Sunday? Whoa, look at that artwork. It's like from a point-and-click adventure. Wait, point-and-click adventure? I mean choose your own adventure. She's massive. Stir Up Sunday is traditionally a day for the family to get together and stir the Christmas pudding. Wow. Is that fun? On which Sunday does it fall? Uh, the last Sunday before Advent. Obviously, otherwise the pie will go mouldy, won't it? I mean the pudding. Stir Up Sunday traditionally falls on the last Sunday before Advent, around five weeks before Christmas. It dates back to the Victorian era. Oh wait, I would have chosen the Sunday before Christmas, probably. 
Because, um, yeah, I don't know. Or the first Sunday of Advent, if I'd thought really hard. I don't know. But it dates back to the Victorian era, and n its name comes from a quote taken from the Book of Common Prayer. Stir up, we beseech thee, O Lord, the wills of thy faithful people. What? What's that got to do with stirring a pudding? With Advent beginning on the fourth Sunday before Christmas, it's possible for Stir Up Sunday to be as early as 20th November, as it will be in twen as it will be in 2022. In 1920, Stir Up Sunday falls on 24th of November. Oh, I missed it. When, prepar when preparating the Christmas pud mixture, what is the traditional number of ingredients to use? We'll count them. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. What's that hand doing? It's doing a dance. Well, unfortunately, that number isn't there, so, uh. Oh! 13 ingredients are traditionally used in a Christmas pudding mixture to represent Jesus and his disciples. What? You're eating Jesus and his disciples? Whoa. Pot. You should get your hair cut. It's gonna fall in the pie. Pudding. In which direction should the Christmas pudding which should be stirred in the bowl? Does it matter? Probably um east to west for some reason. Oh, what the hell? Christmas pudding mixture is traditionally mixed from east to west as it represents this journey of the three kings who visited Jesus in the nativity. Well, you better have the pot face in the right way then. You're going to need to bring out a compass to find out which way is east and west from the position of the spoon. Oh no, we're going to modern times now. Look at these idiots. It's not advisable to add lucky charm trinkets to your Christmas pudding mix. Obviously, you don't want to get them, you don't want to break your teeth on them. You don't want anyone to accidentally swallow them. Yeah, that too. But in the days when it was popular, what charm was added to the pudding mix to symbolise thrift in the coming year? Uh, a thimble? Oh! I don't know what thrift is. All I know is thrifting is buying stuff from charity shops. LGR thrifts. A thimble found in the Christmas pudding supposedly forecast a year of thrift. What does it mean? It was also said that if a, str a single woman found the thimble, she would remain unmarried for the coming year. Oh great! Way to ruin Christmas! Other tokens in the pud included a silver coin for wealth, a ring for marriage, and an anchor for safe heart. What the hell? Look at the size of Christmas puddings, and then imagine trying to put an anchor in that. It would be more anchor than pudding and you'd break the table. It's not recommended to add charms or tokens today, as they can be a choking hazard. Well, they weren't a choking hazard back then. Although Advent doesn't always be on December 1st, it's traditionally the date when we open the first door on our Advent calendars. In which country did the Advent calendar originate? Probably Germany. What the hell, Paul? You obviously looked this up. I don't know. I felt like I heard that one somewhere before. The tradition of marking off the days of Advent with chalk lines on a door, what? Or candles, comes from Germany. Well, I didn't know that bit. This developed into the first Advent calendars as we recognise them today, in the late 19th and early 20th century. I wonder what they'll be in another, I don't know, few hundred years. Two origins have been given for the cardboard version of the calendars. One involves a bookshop owner in Hamburg, and the other credits follow... Oh, fellow German Gerhard Lang, who was inspired by the way his mother made a calendar for him featuring different pictures or sweets to be enjoyed. One per day in the run up to Christmas. Oh. Advent calendars were all inspired by like two people just because they did something in their family or in their place of work. So, because I make videos of opening a door each day, does that mean I'm going to inspire the future advent calendars to be videos instead of chocolates? Yeah, I guess so. Which US president is said to have popularized the advent calendar in America? Probably Trump. Uh, I've no idea. Roosevelt? I don't know any of them. That's the only name I recognize. 
and advent calendars were not unknown in the USA in the 1950s. American GIs had sent them home from Europe during the Second World War, but a photograph of Dwight D. Eisenhower's grandchildren admiring one which appeared in Newsweek magazine in 1953 is said to have boosted their appeal in the States. And finally, you won't add it on Stir Up Sunday, but why does a Christmas pudding traditionally have a holly on top? Because it's Christmassy, isn't it? It represent probably that, to be honest, isn't it? Or it might be that. Yep, yeah, thought so. Has to be Jesus-y, doesn't it? The holly on top of the Christmas pudding with its sharp leaves represents the crown of thorns. That's a uh, damage up, by the way. You want to pick that up whenever you see it. I think it also gives you health up. Yeah, um, worn by Jesus at the crucifixion. The red berries represent his blood. Nice, Merry Christmas. Have some blood and a stabby device. Why is Christmas celebrating Jesus' pain? That's not bad at all. Make sure you save yourself a slice of Christmas pud. A slice of Christmas pud as a reward. No thanks, it's got fruit in it. And apparently Jesus' blood. Are you trying to give me some kind of illness? You're not supposed to ingest other people's blood unless you're a vampire. Also, it looks like a pile of poop. Yeah, anyway. Well, that was that. I'm sorry, you might have been excited for another Talk to Transformer when you noticed that today's was just another video, but we've done two days of those now, and I think yesterday's was good enough that we that I don't want to do another one already, because it might not be as good. What if it was going to be amazing, though? Oh well, just play with it yourself. You know, hours of fun. Anyway... Thanks for watching today's advent calendars. Tomorrow is the last one. Still haven't decided yet exactly what I'm going to do with door number 25 on the CBBC thing. I guess we'll see what number 24 has. If it's just another video or something, I might just do number 25 as well. But if not, then yeah, I guess it might just be in the what I got for Christmas vlog whenever that is done. Oh wait, no, it won't be tomorrow because tomorrow is, is the package. Yeah. Anyway, either way, thanks for watching. See you tomorrow for the final door. Is it going to be a gremlin again? It's probably going to be Santa. Uh, yeah, happy holidays. Hope you're enjoying so far. And stay tuned for more on Piece of Pie Software especially. Goodbye.